In the last lesson and the last series of videos, we looked at modeling the relationship between a quantitative response variable and a categorical predictor variable. And in this lesson and in this series of videos, we're going to look at modeling the relationship between a quantitative response variable and a quantitative predictor variable. We're going to look at correlation in this video and the next, and then in the remaining videos for this lesson, we'll look at simple linear regression. So for this video, we're going to look at linear correlation, in particular, um, a measurement called Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. So let's get some data to look at. So this is data uh, that was collected on a type of nesting seabird uh, called a booby, a Nazca booby. And we've measured, the researchers have measured two variables. Uh, this one here, n visits nestling, so that's the number of visits uh, from unrelated adults when they were a nestling. And then there's a measure of future aggressive behavior. Uh, so the, the idea here is that uh, the more visits the nestling received, uh, then the more likely they are to exhibit uh, aggressive behavior in the future. So we're going to look at this through the lens of correlation. So any time that you're looking at correlation, you need to draw a scatter plot. Uh, correlation is, is meaningless unless you have an accompanying scatter plot to put it into context. So here's our scatter plot with events experienced while a nestling on the horizontal axis and future aggressive behavior on the vertical axis and you can you can see there is there is a, a very slight linear trend here because as the number of events experienced while a nestling increases there's a tendency for future aggressive behavior to increase as well uh, it's it's not a particularly strong correlation um, but but it but it is there for example if you look at birds that had very few events as a nestling, so they're kind of down here in the graph, then their future aggressive behavior also tends to be quite low. There's, there's variation for sure, but uh, we don't have any points up here in the graph. Uh, contrast that with birds that uh, experienced many events as a nestling, so maybe up in the between 20 and 30, and their future aggressive behavior tended to be higher. So we don't have any points down here. Okay, so the book goes through details of how to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient by hand, and I'm not gonna dwell on that here. I invite you to work through those calculations in your own time so that uh, you get a sense for what's going on here, um, but once, once you've got that uh, foundation, that, that deep level of understanding of what the correlation coefficient is measuring, then moving on in practice, uh, you would never go through these hand calculations. Instead, you can use an inbuilt function to calculate correlation. Uh, there's a few of them that will do it in R, but the one we're going to use is called core.test. We can look up what that function does. So here's all the details of, of what this function does. So let's do that. And I've got a couple of, uh, I've got, uh, actually, yeah, let me explain the, the syntax here. So remember this tilde symbol. This, this is common in, R syntax when we're when we're fitting some kind of model. We're not really fitting a model here, um, but but we're still using this syntax. And then on the right hand side of the tilde, there's nothing on the left hand side in this case, but on the right hand side we've got our two variables separated by a plus sign. And then conf dot level equals 0.95. Uh, that's to tell us that if we 
want to calculate a confidence interval, uh, we're going to have a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so I'm going to run that code and then I'm going to label the, the correlation coefficient with the letter R. And we can look at the value. So it's 0.5337225. Okay, so Pearson's correlation coefficient for this data is 0.5337225. We can, we can go through a, a confidence interval calculation. And again, I invite you to do that um, separately uh, to gain a little more understanding of what's going on here. It's a little bit complicated because we end up having to transform the correlation coefficient with this fairly complicated transformation and then we have uh, a standard error that we can measure on that scale and then we end up calculating our confidence interval in the usual way using the point estimate plus or minus a critical value times a standard error. The critical value is coming from a normal distribution in this case. Uh, and then to put the endpoints of the interval back on the original measurement scale, then we've got to back transform. And so we have to do a fairly complicated back transformation here too. So we end up with a confidence interval here. Uh, much easier to simply pull off some of the core dot test output. So that gives us the confidence interval without having to go through all this complicated calculations. So we're 95% confident that the, cor the Pearson's correlation between these two variables, future behavior and events experienced while in nestling, is between 0.166 and 0.771. So that's uh, an illustration of calculating Pearson's correlation between two quantitative variables and also how to calculate a confidence interval for that correlation. And the important thing to remember here is that uh, correlation, Pearson's correlation is only meaningful in the context of a scatterplot. So it's important to draw the scatterplot whenever you're looking at a correlation as well because Pearson's correlation is a measure of the linear association between two variables. And so we can only assess that if we actually look at a scatter plot of the data. So that's Pearson's linear correlation. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, an alternative measure of correlation called Spearman's rank correlation.